His empire was at the largest it had ever been. At the zenith of his power, Ottoman Sultan Bayezid I had been besieging the ancient city of Constantinople for years. It would be his greatest victory, boosting the prestige of the Ottomans. The Byzantine emperor had even fled the city to appeal to Christian courts to send a relief force. The Ottomans instilled fear in all those who crossed their path, and rightly so. But then news from the east reached Bayezid. His rapid expansion and success had reached the courts of another, arguably mightier, empire. What Bayezid could not have foreseen was that the army marching into his lands would bring his empire to nothing short of the brink of collapse. In 1396 at Nicopolis, Sultan Bayezid's forces attained a great victory over a combined crusader force commanded by Hungarian King Sigismund. This victory not only cemented the Ottomans' position south of the Danube, it also ended the Bulgarian Empire and isolated Constantinople from its European allies. After his victory, Bayezid besieged the city and its mighty fortifications, planning to take his time. The situation to the Byzantines was so perilous that Emperor Manuel II traveled to the French and English courts, trying to garner sympathy for his cause and have the siege be relieved by a new crusader army. Manuel could not have known that Constantinople's relief would not come from the west, but from the east. Bayezid's expansion had not gone unnoticed among other rulers in the region. Rulers of smaller states such as the Empire of Trebizond were fearful of the ever-expanding Ottomans and tried to pacify them with recurring tributary payments. But at its eastern border lay something different, the enormous Timurid Empire, an heir of the Mongols. Whereas Bayezid had been incredibly successful in subjugating the Balkan rulers and expanding his empire both on Anatolia and Rumelia, Timur had made similar name for himself in Central Asia. By 1398, he was planning his invasion of India when several dethroned bays of Anatolian principalities arrived at his court in Samarkand. Worried about the growing contender, he demanded Bayezid recognize him as a suzerain, which the Sultan unequivocally refused. Instead, Bayezid wrote to the Caliph of Cairo to grant him the title Sultan of Rum, a provocation that could not go unanswered. As Timur began his trek westward, Bayezid was still patiently besieging Constantinople. Finally, in 1400, Timur reached the Ottoman Empire's eastern border, capturing the city of Sivas. He made sure Bayezid knew of his doings. He received Bayezid's envoys at Sivas and made a spectacular happening of reviewing his troops in front of the envoys. Bayezid's response was just as swift as when he raised an army to defeat the Crusaders at Nicopolis a few years before. First, he raised an army of vassals from the Balkan, among whom Serbians under Stefan Lazarevic, famous for their strong heavy cavalry. He then made his way eastward, collecting troops in Anatolia along the way. Among them was the recently conquered Tartar cavalry and former subjects of the Beyliks he annexed. Bayezid understood many Rumelian forces he recently conquered could show wavering loyalty. As such, he secured his rear by stationing nine ships at Gallipoli and twenty more in the Aegean Sea. Once taken care of this, he rapidly moved his army towards the east to prevent Timur from conquering any more of his territories. Harvest season had just ended, and his advisors pressured him into postponing his campaign. When he arrived at Ankara, they warned him to remain near the city and wait for Timur. Instead, Bayezid left a garrison there and trekked eastward, convinced he would be able to use the vast water sources in his rear when he met Timur. What Bayezid did not know was that Timur had ample scouts in the region reporting his every move. When he heard Bayezid was trekking east, he moved southwest from Sivas, evading the Ottomans. After six days of unopposed marching, they took the city of Kayseri, where they rested for four days and replenished their supplies. It took four more days to reach Kirshahir. Here, Timur made the first minor contact with Ottoman scouts, who barely posed a threat to Timur's mighty army. They continued their trek, and after three days, they reached the northeast of Ankara. As Timur arrived, he immediately ordered the besiegement of Ankara and the taking of positions of his army. He also ordered the building of dams to divert the city's water supply. This would turn out to be crucial, for Timur's troops would be replenished in the late summer heat, whereas Bayezid's army was running low on supplies. When Bayezid received news of Timur's arrival at Ankara, he immediately turned his armies around. To Timur's surprise, they arrived sooner than expected. Bayezid hurried and arrived at Ankara in two instead of three days. On July 28, 1402, the two armies met each other. As Bayezid's army made its entry to the valley where the battle would take place, they had suffered from the lack of water and scorching sun. The army was in a very poor state. Timur had blocked the only creek that gave them access to water, 
and the summer heat dried the soldiers out. In the distance, they saw Timur's troops scale the walls of Ankara and the dams they built to divert the water from them. As a result, they would have to face the upcoming battle exhausted and thirsty. They planned a defensive battle. Sources estimate they numbered around 85,000 troops. Bayezid centered his army around his cavalry and infantry together with his son Isa. Isa's soldiers mainly consisted of Serbs, Rumelians and archers. He positioned himself on a hill together with his trusted infantry. His left flank was manned by his son Suleiman, while his right flank was composed of 20,000 Serbian heavy cavalry and Rumelian troops such as the Wallachians from the recently annexed Thessaly, commanded by Stefan Lazarevic. The infantry consisted of Janissaries, an elite infantry corps composed of men from the Christian Balkan lands. These Janissaries were often taken away from their families as young boys and brought up at Ottoman military schools swearing loyalty to no one but the Sultan. A large contingent of Bayezid's cavalry was composed of Tartars, who he placed in front of the line to take the major hits from Timur's attacks. Both armies were positioned similarly, with the infantry surrounding their commanders and cavalry on the wings. Sources estimate Timur's army numbered approximately 140,000 troops, primarily cavalry, both melee and horse archers, and 32 war elephants from India. He had ample time to organize his battle formations. His son Miran Shah commanded the right wing, and his other son, Shah Rukh, commanded the left wing. His army was strengthened by several exiled Ottoman bays, namely the emirs from Aydin, Saruhan, Mentesha, and Jermian. Bayezid's command to his Anatolian left flank to launch a large attack marked the start of the battle. Immediately, the Ottomans knew what they were in for, as Timurid horse archers chipped away at the cavalry charge. The Ottomans' right flank saw a cavalry charge against the Serbians. In their heavy armor, they held firm, easily repelling the light-armored Timurid horsemen. Up to three times Lazarevich broke through Timurid range, each time facing large reinforcements sent by Timur. Finally, when he risked breaking through and getting cut off from the main Ottoman army, Bayezid ordered Lazarevich to retreat, a costly but strategically necessary maneuver. Chronicles reveal even Timur exclaimed, the wretches fight like lions, as a testament to their tenacity. Being attacked on their left flank by Timurid reinforcements, the Serbian cavalry was finally pushed back, exposing Bayezid's right contingent of Janissaries. But as the battle went on, another problem emerged. The Tartar cavalry was prone to defection. In fact, within too soon, the entire Tartar cavalry deserted from the front line. Sources reveal the defecting Tartars charged in the rear of the fighting Anatolian cavalry on Bayezid's left flank. Prince Mehmed took reserves to charge against Tartars, but the Timurid significantly outnumbered the encircled Anatolian cavalry, even with these reinforcements. Seeing this defection and probably recognizing many of their former emirs fighting on Timurid's side, the cavalry of the recently annexed Beyleks too deserted. Thus, Bayezid had already lost a quarter of his army just to defection. An eyewitness account describes how, aside from the hills of arrows, the cavalry was sprayed with Greek fire on the backs of war elephants. This caused mass casualties, confusion and routes. Bayezid suffered approximately 15,000 losses at this point, and Suleiman ordered a retreat to prevent the complete destruction of his cavalry. Launching a charge to break through the Tartars, he managed to reach the main force again, But seeing the battle around him, Suleiman and his youngest brother Mehmed figured there was no winning the battle anymore. Together with their soldiers, they retreated from the battlefield altogether, leaving Bayezid behind. Lazarevich's cavalry on the right wing managed to hold back the advancing Timurid cavalry. Frankly, they had been the most successful unit fighting on Bayezid's side so far. But when they realized the Anatolians had defected, they too returned to their original lines and charged against the Anatolians. But soon after engaging them in battle, they learned Suleiman's cavalry had withdrawn from the battlefield entirely. The Serbs saw no hope for a victory. Lazarevich tried to convince the Sultan to flee, but he refused. Instead, he retreated to the hill in their rear, trying to find strategic high ground to fend off the attacks. Lazarevich and his Serbian cavalry were not planning to make a costly last stand and retreated from the battlefield as well. 
Merely left behind with his janissaries and around 1,000 horsemen, the Sultan was utterly surrounded by Timur's troops. The janissaries held firm and hours upon hours they kept fighting against the Timur troops trying to get on the hill. But as nighttime fell and the end of the battle neared, most of his janissaries were killed and Bayezid was left with no more than 300 horsemen. In the middle of the night, he ordered a breakout. The horsemen charged into the Timurid infantry surrounding them, but it was all to no avail. Finally, Bayezid was captured together with his son Musa. As Bayezid was captured, most of the horsemen were undoubtedly slaughtered. Although probably fiction, many paintings and accounts survive of Timur parading Bayezid around Anatolia in a cage. Ankara quickly surrendered to Timur. After his victory, a year of plundering and besiegement followed, and the main trading hubs such as Bursa were ravaged. Ottoman chroniclers agree Bayezid lost the battle due to the desertion of his troops. The Sultan had gone from the zenith of power to no more than a prisoner. Timur returned Bayezid's annexed territories to their former lords. The disgraced Sultan passed away not too long after. After his death, the so-called Ottoman Interregnum broke out, a civil war between the brothers Suleiman, Isa, Mehmed, and Musa. If you would like to know more about the political history preceding and following the Battle of Ankara, check out my video on the history of the Ottoman Empire before the siege of Constantinople in 1453. Thank you very much for watching this video. If there's a topic or event you would like to know more about, let me know your thoughts in a comment. I would also really like to thank all my patrons and channel members for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and want to support my work, consider joining me on Patreon. For just one dollar a month, you already get access to exclusive videos and behind the scenes. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.